the price of dentistry shouldn't be mental illness. At 14, I decided I was going to be a dentist. I was so excited, so I would tell everyone. And I would usually get two responses. The first being, ew, you want to look into people's mouths all day? And the second, don't dentists have one of the highest suicide rates? It didn't matter to me because I was so excited. I knew who I was going to be, and I knew about mental illness. At 20, my 15-year-old cousin committed suicide because she was being bullied at school. At 20, my mom, who's already bipolar, experiences a traumatic brain injury where she develops psychosis and doesn't remember who I am. At 20, I was diagnosed with a learning disability and I had to learn how to learn all over again. If 20 didn't knock me down, I knew I was going to be fine. But no one talks about the dark side of dentistry. Fast forward to the first few years of me practicing as a dentist. I overworked to predict and prevent mistakes, to prove my worth to patients, staff, and peers. I explained away my successes, and I underestimated my abilities. I was always exhausted, even when I rested. And I wore it as a badge of honor. I started to wish away the next 25, 30 years of my career so I could get to retirement, because that's when I would be happy, right? At 14, I decided I was going to be a dentist, and so what I started to do was digging this hole, and at the bottom of this hole was going to be this magical place of dentistry, and I just kept digging and digging. Obstacles, I kept digging. Challenges, I kept digging and digging and digging. but I forgot to look up and out. I was now surrounded in this deep, dark abyss. I was diagnosed with clinical depression, a generalized anxiety disorder, and was experiencing my third burnout. Three burnouts too many. This is the dark side of dentistry that no one wants to talk about. Let me invite you into my operatory. Hey, Mr. Smith, long time no see, to ease the tension in the room. I actually saw Mr. Smith yesterday. Mr. Smith is a head and neck cancer patient, and I'm a general dentist who solely treats cancer patients. Mr. Smith is here seeing me today because we're getting him ready for radiation, so we're doing an extraction. I pick up the local anesthetic, and as I start to administer it, I look at the tooth, and my heart starts to race. I know what's going to happen. I finish giving local, and I head back to my office. I sit in the chair, and I pull up the x-ray again. I already looked at it at lunch this morning and yesterday. I treatment planned it. Why am I starting to get nervous? My heart continues to race, but this time my breathing starts to pick up. <sighs> Why did you treatment plan this? You should have referred this. You can't do this. You're not capable, you're not good enough. I start to sweat, so I reach into the cupboard and I grab the next set of scrubs because haven't you ever completed a procedure where you've had to change your scrubs afterwards? I hear a knock on the door, it's my assistant letting me know that Mr. Smith is ready. So I start to get up and head out, and as I immediately do, I have to make a U-turn back to the computer. I have to look at the x-ray one more time. Why? I don't need to memorize it. It's going to be in the clinic. I head back to the operatory, and I start the procedure. I pick up my instruments. Tooth is previously root canal treated. Crack. It has recurrent caries. Crack. I knew it was going to come out in pieces. Crack. Did I think this many pieces? Crack. You shouldn't have done this. Crack. You can't do this. Crack. There's a root tip left. What if I make a mistake? What if there's a complication? What if the patient complains? What if I get sued? What if I can't practice dentistry? Who am I? Stop! I yell to the thoughts in my head. They're not helping. Refocus. What do you need? I turn to my assistant and I ask for the final instrument. I take the root tip out, I suture the socket, and I send the patient on his way. 
I head back to my office and I flop into the chair. I'm exhausted. I just had a panic attack. This is the dark side of dentistry that no one wants to talk about. Seven of 10 dentists experience anxiety. Six of 10 dentists experience depression. Dentists are 2.5 times more likely to experience suicidal ideation than the general population. And if you experience crippling self-doubt in combination with perfectionism, you are more likely to develop psychological distress, ultimately leading to burnout. No wonder why I was wishing away the next 25, 30 years of my career. The high achiever in me, the dentist in me, couldn't have prepared 14 or 20-year-old me. But the great thing about dentistry for me is treating cancer patients because I get free life advice every single day. Here's the thing though, I wasn't actually listening until one day it finally clicked. Don't wait until retirement because you don't know if you'll be around to enjoy it. Stop hoping for a change. Make the change happen. And my favorite, life is a book. And this is a chapter. And I was ready to turn my page, but I felt like a failure. I felt like I failed as the daughter, as the caregiver, as the friend, as the high achiever, as the dentist. I felt like I failed at life. I couldn't ask for help because there's still a stigma associated with mental illness. I couldn't ask for help because I would be judged. I couldn't ask for help because I was the one helping others. I was the doctor. When I finally started to get the help that I needed, which took a lot longer than I'd like to admit, I started to realize I was creating my own life advice. And that is what I want to share with you today. Don't wait until you're breaking to take a break. We tell our patients all the time, don't wait until you're symptomatic to come and see us. So why do we allow ourselves to become symptomatic? Find a trust squad and choose wisely. There are gonna be good days, there's gonna be bad days. Not everything can be rainbow sunshine and unicorns all the time, but when you have those trust squad members, you can create a safe space to be vulnerable, to share those doubts, those fears, but also the joys and awesomeness that comes from being in dentistry. And if you don't have a trust squad, I can be your first member. My last, a bad day, a broken endophile, a complicated procedure, maybe with a sinus perforation, <laughs> a snide comment from anyone, a disgruntled patient, a one-star Google review, doesn't mean you're a bad dentist. Let me repeat. A bad day doesn't mean you're a bad dentist. The price of dentistry doesn't have to be mental illness. 